This is segment four. This is Tom Harris. I'm director of the University Center for Economic Development. And for, part of our uh, activities in the University Center for Economic Development, we're also part of the Nevada Cooperative Extension. And one of the programs is the Risk Management Agency Program. Mike Helmer is here. He, Mike is part of the University Center for Economic Development and also with the Food and Ag Policy Research Institute. Mike, this session, Mike will be addressing dairy issues. If you look last week in the Wall Street, there was an uh, a article talking about farmers nationally dumping milk. That hadn't happened since the 1960s. So dairy has had a very up and down volatile type of uh, economic volatility. And it should be of interest because dairy is something that we're looking at expanding here in the state. So Mike, can you give us some insights to what's going on in the dairy uh, sector and, and maybe some forecasts, what people are forecasting in the future? Yeah, thanks, Tom. <laughs> yeah, well, right now, and, and one of the reasons, uh, I think it was 43 million pounds of yes. milk were, 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 yeah. were dumped last week, uh, that's a response to, if we take a look at this first chart, if you look at both lines, the red and the blue line, or the, the, uh, there's actually three lines on there, a couple of them run together most of the time. But uh, we can see that in 2015, those are dairy, dairy, those are milk prices, that the milk prices crashed. Yeah. They had been very high before that, uh, they crashed. Now part of that reason was feed costs dropped and all that. But in 2016, they, 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 they receded even further and we have a lot of dairy producers around the country particularly if they didn't buy into the margin protection plan, okay. or at least at, a, at a higher rates, are losing, losing, losing money. some money. And yes. so they're dumping the milk. It, 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 uh, it's, it costs them less to lose the milk than to get a low price plus pay transportation costs to wherever it's True. going. True. Uh, so, so they are, they are dumping, even dumping some of that milk. Even with gas prices declining, that's even, even that. Too. Yeah, and transportation costs, you know, are, are part of that to getting there, but it's also, you know, you've got to rent the truck fleet yes. and you've got to pay drivers and things, there's a whole, things, there's of, whole, things of that There's a whole economics that on that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But as we started off with national milk prices and, of course, state prices following that, just fell precipitously last year uh, in, in, in 2015 and are, and are down a, a little bit more yet this year. Um, and again, part of that is is that feed costs, at least nationally, declined a lot. We saw a big drop in, in our corn prices, saw a big drop in our uh, protein meal prices like soybean meal and hay prices uh, you know, nationally fell quite a bit. So those milk prices did, did drop. Now, you, we can say that and talk about a national average, but it's a little different in Nevada. We have a little different feed ration, and it may not have dropped quite as much. But even mm -hmm. so, it did still drop. We saw the hay prices mm -hmm. that we talked mm -hmm. about earlier. Uh, and that, but we expect to see them come back a little bit, but not reach the, 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 the areas that we saw in back 2014. in two, 2014. No, nowhere near that. Uh, so they'll, they'll come back over time. But dairy farmers are not going to be a wash in cash. Over, over the next few years. It's going to be kind of a tough road tough to hoe for... Tough margins. Yeah, yeah the, the, mar the margins are, are going to go down. <laughs> and so this is the time to talk about this chart. This is, this is a chart that shows the milk price. This is the national milk price. And the MPP, the, the Margin Protection Plan, calculated feed cost on there. And so you can see that we've got quite a bit. We've got seven to eight dollars or maybe nine dollars worth, worth of margin in there between the milk price per hundredweight and the equivalent feed cost per hundredweight of, 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 of production milk. So those feed costs are going to be down. But what that means is that if, if a producer just took the free four dollar protection limit, right. which, is, which is which the USDA offers and it's, uh, that's free, he's not going to get a payment. He's going to operate completely on, on his local market. If you go up, and you can go up to $8 coverage, but you pay money as that goes up. True. Those guys at $8, there are going to be some months, and it's not just an annual average, but two months worth of, worth of averages at a time. Some people are going to get some payments, but you've got to pay into that, that, that higher, that much higher you've level. You've got to pay a premium to get there. You've got to pay a premium to get there. So basically the point of this is, is that for the most part, nationally and in Nevada as well, uh, dairy is going to operate off the market. It's going to be a completely market-oriented industry. Okay. 
So we, so we looked at those low milk prices, and uh, I kind of want to switch a little bit now here to talk about herd expansion mm -hmm. in Nevada. Hard to expand herds when you have low milk prices and low profitability. But we've got the whole milk powder plant that went into operation a couple of years ago in Fallon mm -hmm. that provided a, a, a huge market for Nevada producers. And the goal is to eventually have Nevada, local northern Nevada producers, feed that 2 million pounds a day that that milk plant will take of, of, of liquid milk, <coughs> fluid milk. And this is not necessarily a projection of what will happen, although uh, it, 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 it's kind of a what it will require to meet that. And what it is is that uh, if, if we look on the left side, and that goes with the blue line, that's the number of, that's the head of dairy cows mm -hmm. in Nevada. And it will be from 2015 or 2014 until we reach capacity, if we supply all the milk in the state, it's going to be about 16,000 head increase, which is about doubling the northern Nevada herd. We'll have to double. And as you can see, the bottom of the red line is just that equivalent in terms of milk production. That will follow right along with the number of, <coughs> the number of, of dairy cows. Um, in order to, to expand the herd like that, it's, it's going to take some economic incentives or some incentives, some, some forward, some really forward-looking dairymen, given the particular environment that we're in right, right now. Uh, right, you know, we've seen anecdotally that, that there have been a few expansions True. of a few thousand head, in uh, particularly in, in Churchill County, uh, but it hasn't expanded like we had hoped. Again, they're running into those economic headwinds, and they're still being constrained by water availability. To run a dairy, it takes water. To grow the feed, it takes water. So we still have those headwinds in front of us. But we have some forward-looking dairy producers in this state who are looking beyond, I believe, it appears that that's what they're doing, looking beyond the current economic environment. And they're big. And larger dairies can go with a smaller margin. Mm -hmm. They make it up in volume. And so they're forward-looking. Economies of scale. Too. Economies of scale. <clears throat> they're looking beyond low profits right now, trying to make that up in, in, in volume, and they're looking forward to a time when the profits will be better and they'll be set to really supply sure. that plant. Yeah. <clears throat> but here's the question that we just kind of hit on a little bit. Can lower profitability drive the expansion? I guess what I really want to ask <clears throat> is can the economic incentives, can lower profitability or can profitability itself drive the expansion? And here we look, uh, we look at the cost. This is looking at, at cost of dairy pro uh, production in terms of milk uh, per hundred weight of milk. That's 100 pounds of milk uh, sold. And then the black line is the gross value of production. Now, this doesn't include just milk production, but this includes sale of Heifer. calves and sell of, sale of, of cull cows mm -hmm. and, and, and even heifers if, 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 if the sure. rancher decides not to breed them. Uh, so, so that all that's in there, but it's primarily milk, yeah. milk production. So you can see that the the, the top of that line where it, where it peaks up, the black line peaks up with a good gap above the the, the bar was in 2014. It was a good year for dairy producers. Mm -hmm. We had high milk prices over twenty dollars per hundred weight, uh, substantially over twenty dollars per hundred weight. And even though we had still had, were in a high price environment, the milk prices were enough to offset, offset that. Those prices and and dairy, that was a good year for dairy. We hit 2015. Costs go down, but milk prices really dropped. And, and we can see that profitability disappeared. In fact, there's some dairy producers that, that, that took losses last year. Now, we expect to see that once we get all the data in for this year in 2016, that that profitability won't be negative, but it's going to be very, very small. And with the milk prices that we have in front of us and the costs, even though they're relatively you know, benign, increases over the time, those milk prices are going to stay low enough that we're not, it's not going to see profitability return to the dairy sector anytime soon, at least not, not real great profitability that you would think of in terms of being needed to induce the dairy expansion. So it's going to be a, a difficult time to expand our herds in Nevada. So it's just showing here that, that we've, got, we've got producers that say they're going to do it, they're starting to do it. But economically, it's going to be tough for them. Right. Yeah. I guess your next slide is very interesting uh, in this, is the battling the competition 
with the foreign uh, competitors and as well as the strong dollar, which yeah. makes us less competitive, really. Yeah, it does. Uh, and as, as, as you can, can see from these, these lines, and these are just some of the different major products mm -hmm. that we have. We have uh, non-fat dry milk on the bottom, cheese, uh, whey, butter, which is very, very small. Uh, and, and then there's other dairy products out there that, that, that we export. That uh, through about 2014, uh, we, we did very well in terms of, of, of dairy exports sure. around the world. In 2015, that's you know, 2014 is the time when we really saw the dollar begin to get strong, and so more so in 2015, and we started seeing that uh, our our products become very expensive in foreign markets, and when it comes to dairy exports and dairy production, we're not the we're not the we're not the big dog in the fight. No, and particularly with a lot of the markets that we export to, and the Asian markets, the growing markets. New Zealand. New Zealand. New Zealand is the big dog in the, in, in the fight. They've got a dairy industry that's very low cost. It's almost completely grass-fed, <laughs> grazing-based. Uh, they've got some very, very modern processing facilities that, that really cuts their production cost, and they're extremely competitive. Additionally, in that Asian market, they're just located yes, right there in right it. There. And so they started to beat us up a little bit last year. And again, I did with this, you can see that I've got the first six months of 2015 compared to 2016. The New Zealanders are actually beating us even more so this year uh, in, in those markets than they were last year. And there's something else going on there, there too uh, that, that we'll get to in, in, in a minute. But right now, we're kind of getting beat up in, 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 in global dairy markets. markets. Okay. <coughs> Regardless, if we look at, if we just want to look at some basic economics in terms of whole milk powder production, and this is important for our Fallon plant, if we take a look at the blue line is a whole milk powder powder price. It's a projection of the whole milk powder price, a global price. This is this is in the Pacific region, mm -hmm. specifically for Pacific region, compared to the Class 3A milk price, and it's Class 3A milk. Is what's is what's being used for to, to make the the, oh, the milk powder. Milk powder product. Yeah, it's it's not the class one, uh, True. but it's a class three A. If we take a look at that, and we and if we take that class three A milk price and put it on a pound for pound equivalent for whole milk powder, we can see that there is quite a gap between the two, and that there is some profitability, probably forty cents a pound or thirty five cents a pound, uh, just between the milk price and the whole milk powder price. So it shows that there's there's good potential for profitability for our for our processing plant in Fallon. I just want to make make sure that we understand one thing here. This is the gap between the milk price and the input price and the output price, the whole milk powder price. It does not include labor costs, uh, other plant operating costs, and things of that nature. So that that margin is actually lower than that. But just that gap between the milk price and that and that powder price is going to be looks like it's going to be maintained, okay. so that there will be some profits there that will support that plant, providing, and here's the big provision, we have the market, and that has developed into an issue lately. Okay, and here's the issue. <clears throat> target market, our target market for that for that plant is supposed to be 85 or 90 percent of the 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 output from that plant is destined for China. China is going to use it like you and I would use milk out of a milk carton at our at our dinner table. Mm -hmm. They their their fluid milk is not is has some quality issues and some health issues and some contamination issues. Whereas this milk, they take that whole milk powder and they just reconstitute it. They just mix it with water and set it right there on the table. It's what mm -hmm. they it's what they drink, it's what their it's what their kids drink. That's the market that we're looking at. However, <coughs> the major exporter in the world for whole milk powder, and they're very efficient at it, and the, they've got a locational advantage, is again, New Zealand. New Zealand. Now, if we go back to 2000 and 2013 and then 2014, we see a big uptick in U.S. exports of, 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 of whole milk powder uh, to China. We see, boy, and this is at the time, 2014 is when our plant was coming online. And we looked at it and says, this is great, we're off and running. Well, a couple of things happened in that year. 
one of those things was that the New Zealand plant had some issue. It's it's one of the major yes. New Zealand plant had some yeah. issues and had to shut down for a while. Yes. We picked up a lot of that. In fact, what happened in New Zealand currency dropped two bucks because of that. That's yeah. how interdependent that whole yeah. New Zealand dry milk powder is to the New Zealand economy. Yeah. And so it it, um, it just put a put a yes. big gap in into what China was was buying. And so they mm -hmm. turned to the U.S. We have, we're on the West Coast, yes. our, our milk powder plant. It gets shipped through the port of Oakland. Boy, it was just like we filled right into that gap, and we thought we were, were off and running. New Zealand came back. They're an established supplier for the Chinese. The Chinese like established suppliers. They went back to New Zealand. And on top of that, China had bought some extra milk powder to build some stocks. Mm -hmm. They kind of got out of that game. Mm. So what happened is we get into 2015, is we we pretty much lost a lot of that a lot of that market. market, and we need we need to build that market back. Uh, the, so the, the the issue is is to convince the Chinese to drink more fluid milk that they import, mm -hmm. and that goes beyond the capacity of what New Zealand can supply them. We will fall in line as the next supplier. They've already seen us; they like us. We can come back into that market. Okay. Yeah. Uh, And that's, that's about it. That's, that's okay. about it. All right. Well, thank you, Mike. That's, that's the end of the podcast. This is on dairy. And again, this is for educational uses, not financial recommendations. And if you have any comments on the podcast, there's areas for you to make comments, and we can continue this discussion. I hope you enjoyed these podcasts and kind of learned about what's going on with Nevada agriculture and potential Nevada ag prices in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you.